I thought I'd show you how I go about fixing broken buttons on a Tascam 244 and uh, the principles I'm showing you here are going to apply for broken buttons on most models of Tascam that I can think of off the top of my head. Not the Porter 1 and Porter 2, um, that's got a different kind of button, but certainly 244, 246, 144, um, 424 series. Yeah, I think 414 is different as well, but m most of them they operate a plastic hinged button and then there's a PCB mounted switch underneath. So if you look at the underside here, basically when you push that, that little tab there is going to push down onto the top of one of these. So the actual switches here, these are really just for aesthetics. You can see on this one, that one's missing completely and that one has broken at one corner. Basically, um, as these age, and I'm not exactly sure what the variables are, I guess it's like heat, sunlight, moisture, but they become brittle with age. The paler they are, then usually the more flexible they remain. A lot of the time, the ones that wear like loads of the buttons are broken. It's the ones that have kind of turned a kind of tobacco yellow. You can see I've got a whole bag of organized buttons that have accumulated over the years. Uh, this one seems like a, a decent color match. So what I'll be doing is replacing the stop button and fixing that play button so it's not dangling at one side. The process for this is to get um, cable ties. That's what I mean by a cable tie, if you're not sure. You wrap that around the cable to make it tight. It's one of these guys. But the thing about it that's good for this is that it's a very thin and flexible piece of plastic. So you can make new hinges from this. So see where that broken one, I can get a length about yay long, cut it off. If I glue it both sides, then that'll provide me with a new hinge. Maybe a more appropriate adhesive. I'm just using uh, super glue. I happen to have the Gorilla brand at the moment. I've used Loctite, it's fine. Uh, sometimes that isn't an absolutely perfect joint. So, um, and in an earlier video, I was showing how to mend to the case of a 424 Mark III using spin welding. So after I've glued it, then I might do a little spot weld with the spin welding here and here. If you haven't already seen that video, all that is is you're putting a plastic rod inside a hand drill and then you're introducing another plastic rod from the side and the rotation creates friction, which creates heat. And the, the two bits of plastic and the plastic on the surface that you're welding melt together. And it makes a very strong, though a very ugly joint. But as long as it's internal like this and it's not on the outside of the machine, then it's fine. When you've got a completely loose button like this, the placement of it inside that socket is somewhat important. Like it can be too far down or too far up or off to the side. And it's not like a huge deal, but it just makes it the button feel a bit stiffer. Um, you can compensate for that a bit by just folding bits of paper around the inside of there so there's a little bit of tolerance around the button so I'll just masking tape it in place until the gluing part of the operation is done that way after that's glued you can pull the take the tape off the other side and pull those bits of papers out and then that button should be sitting kind of at least equidistant from those two edges. If you do that and sort of line up visually with other ones, then you don't need to do all four sides. That's probably enough. So I'll just get some lengths of this stuff. I'm not doing any hardcore measuring here. I'm just eyeballing it really. I've seen other people attempt roughly the same thing using like old gift cards and you know, other bits of flexible plastic. That's fine. Um, but you know, these are it's just that much thinner. I mean, it's it's important that it's not thicker overall than these little plastic tabs. Otherwise, I suppose you could interfere with how the plastic button is making contact with the electric switch underneath. Okay, um, so I'll now glue these down. I'm just going to apply the glue with a bit of scrap plastic here because I don't want to kind of get any on my fingers if I can avoid it. And having put glue in it, then I'm going to try and put that down with tweezers in the right place. And you can see it's pretty fiddly. Like a lot of things about working with these, to be honest. Okay, I'll pause the camera, but basically I'm going to glue all four of them down. Okay, these have been left to dry. 
they're quite firmly attached to the buttons at the bottom here but both here and here it's harder to make a joint there because there's less surface area and you've got this kind of channel so could push that down and glue again if you only had the glue but i'm going to rely on the spin welding process to fix that remove this stuff now yeah that's left a nice little bit of tolerance around that glued in button Okay, over at the other bench in my, I demonstrated this before, but I'm just using a kind of cheap hand drill. I've got a um, plastic rod in the hand drill, a thinner one that I'm feeding in from the side, and the friction between the three points is going to give me an effect a bit like metal welding. I'll have a kind of bubbly bit of plastic here. See how that started to go wide there? It's a bit too long. Because it's bendy, it'll, it'll start broadening out at the end here and it'll actually snap here. So I need to cut it down a little bit. Okay, uh, I don't seem to have my touch today. Uh, well, yeah, that's fine. That's going to work. I might file that down. Um, this is not exemplary spin welding here folks, I've done it better than that on many other occasions but hey at least you know I'm really filming this live. Okay so I've uh, snipped at lumps of plastic in a couple of places where I think they would uh, interfere with the switches beneath. Now obviously this looks like hell from inside but when you turn it on, I mean that one's that looks slightly different just because it's bent that way more than the others. I'd be satisfied and I kind of know from my experience that that's going to be fine once I reassemble this guy.